Hey, it is auto recording. Look at that. Oh, how about that? Okay. I guess we do have it set to auto record. <laughs> Good ask, Brittany. As we're behind the scenes, like, oh my gosh, what's going on? Hey, everybody. How's it going? Uh, pay no attention to the several people behind the curtain. Um, we're going to give it a few more minutes, let some people populate in, curtain. some of the, oh. the stragglers kind of bring in. We'll probably get started in about curtain. 60 seconds or so. So, you know, one MCAT question um, goes faster than you expect. You know, time flies when you're having fun, right, Adam? <laughs> So, I'm already having fun. I feel like we're almost finished. Oh my gosh. Uh, so, hey, everybody. Welcome to Drawn Together uh, Biology Masterclass. This is uh, our very, oh, I don't know if I want to say very first, but it's one of the first uh, and not the last uh, blueprint and sketchy collaborative webinar. So this is going to be super awesome. Um, really quickly, before we dive into anything, including like who I am, who these people are, we're all just strangers for a second. Please, everyone who is here in attendance, listening to my way too loud voice. Go ahead and change your chat settings in Zoom instead of just hosts uh, and panelists. Change it to everyone. Um, and when you do that, why don't you go ahead and throw something in the chat? Say, hey, hi, hello, what's up? Um, oh, look at all y'all. Hey, oh, what up? How's it going? You guys rock. Where's everyone tuning in from, by the, the way? The very first person wrote, oh, that was actually you, Hunter. I was going to say someone <laughs> yes. actually wrote, hi, hello, what's up? But no, that was <laughs> All right, let's see. We got some Chicago's. We got some Florida's. Heck yes. Canada. Hey, I don't even know what time zone you're in. Um, New Orleans. I love New Orleans. There's a great oyster place that I went to. Uh, El Salvador. Holy cow. New York. Hey, who uh, Jess on here was in East Coast. So look at that. More East Coast people. Wonderful. Uh, so hey, if you are on the East Coast, I very much appreciate y'all tuning in because it's a little bit on the later side. Um, and you know what? If your time zone for some of those that I didn't know was even further out, you rock and you're a trooper and this is going to be great time. Uh, so it looks like we've all got it. Thank you so much. And here's kind of like the deal with the entire um, webinar. Like if we're on a slide or we're talking about something and y'all have a question, feel free to throw it in the chat. Like that's kind of the fun thing about this being live instead of just like pre-recording all this stuff. We can answer your questions. If your question's like a little bit off topic, there's a Q&A button where you can just kind of throw that in. Um, and Jess, our wonderful individual um, who actually, by the way, don't sleep on Jess. Jess is like the, the director of Sketchy MCAT, right? Did I get that correct? You did. Thank you, Hunter. Yeah. So like y'all are honored to have Jess in the chat. Let me tell you what. Um, so yeah, yeah. Go ahead and throw it in there. Let's do some introductions. Hi, my name's Hunter. I'm a blueprint instructor. I'm a tutor. Um, I've been <laughs> hanging out with this test for way too long, about like nine, almost 10 years. I tell all of my students that it's Stockholm syndrome. Like you kind of fall in love with the test. Once you're done with it, you're on the other side of it. Um, so hi, how's it going? Uh, I'm also going to just pass it down because like I could read their introductions, but that's super lame and really like they can introduce themselves way better. So uh, Ricky, you're next up. You want to just hop on and say hey to everybody? Yeah. Hi, I am Ricky Johnson. I am an associate creative director at Sketchy. Uh, I actually was the winner of at least one uh, Sketchy Ween costume contest, but it ben was more than one. It was, it was <laughs> one. It was about one. Uh, I do have way too many consonants in my name. I don't know why. I could get the same thing done with like four or less letters, but here we are. <laughs> I, I absolutely love it. I didn't even consider that. Um, it's okay. We're not, we're not, even <laughs> we're all by ben, ben wrote these for me. <laughs> oh, wonderful. wonderful. <laughs> That's even better, actually. It's, you know, get your, get your true feelings out. I return um, the paper. <laughs> Corey, Corey, you're next on our list here, and you've, you're the only one with an awesome gift. So, what's up? Uh, introduce us, my friend. Oh no, Corey, you're muted. You're muted on Zoom. Can I unmute? Hey, not anymore. I'm not. Perfect. <laughs> I am our director at Sketchy uh, Hunter, and it's funny you mentioned gifts. Look at that, boy. Uh, apparently, I'm better at making gifts than you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's my job here to make things look nice, and today I will be operating in the guise of a storyboard artist. Wonderful. Um, and actually, so sneak preview for the rest of uh, our, our uh, event today. Um, Corey, like, yeah, says art director at Sketchy, but like literally Corey's the one that's sitting down like drawing things. Um, and there's going to be a fun little portion kind of towards the middle and the end and everything else where uh, Corey's going to be drawing live and y'all who are here, like get to kind of influence, you get to whisper in the ear of the artist um, and y'all are going to make some real changes to, oops, to the actual, um, to the Sketchy, like, what do y'all call them? The sketchy video? It's not a module. Yeah, video. Yeah. Lesson, video, video. Lesson. sketchy, lessons, pick one. But, but in our heart, we call them sketches. Oh, I like it. Yeah. So y'all are going to be able to influence today's sketch. Um, let's keep going down the line here. 
Uh, hey, what up, Adam? How's it going? Long time no see. Yeah. Uh, gosh, I haven't seen you since like we, you know, prepared for this event earlier today. I mean, I mean, no, no, this is all spontaneous. Uh, so my name is Adam. And most importantly, I did not get the memo to let Ben write my bio or else it would be a lot more fun. Uh, I am the head of med and pre-med education and sketchy, which means pre-med, of course, includes MCAT and undergrad, but medical includes uh, you know, uh, all the sketchy medical stuff that we have, which is kind of a, well, I'll get to it in a minute, but um, uh, just uh, kind of the head of the educators, essentially, uh, at, at Sketchy, figuring out what we're going to cover, what we're going to build, in what order, getting everything done. I've been working in MCAT and test prep and, um, you know, adjacent areas for over 10 years. Uh, and yeah, uh, I, it turns out I was actually higher number one for MCAT, for Sketchy, um, when we decided to get into this thing. Um, and uh, Jess joined me very, very quickly after that. And now uh, Jess is uh, in that exact seat. Uh, but I still love the MCAT. Um, I think, Hunter, I agree with you. You know, when you get to the other side of it, you know, you can learn to love it. I do think we need to play with the pronouns a little bit because maybe that happened to you and me, but somehow I don't think that happens for everyone. We'll have to, we'll have to poll the audience for that, I think. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, and actually, yeah, uh, you were speaking that you were M uh, the first MCAT hire over here at Sketchy. I'm um, actually seeing a lot of people in uh, chat asking, is this first step? We are talking MCAT today. Um, but like, really, we're talking, it's, a, it's kind of a deep dive into how Sketchy works and how they operate. So like these things can apply to the step ones. Um, but today we're talking MCAT. We're going to be doing some MCAT questions at the very end. Um, and heck yeah, if y'all are in, hanging out with us and you're in your step and you've passed the MCAT, then like, those questions should be easy peasy. Help your- Yeah, also, those of you who are here from med, like, after you finished the MCAT, did you fall in love with it? I want to see your answers in the, <laughs> in the chat. <laughs> I do. I do. No, for real. I actually want to know. So I uh, do a six for a thumbs up or, or nine for a thumbs down if y'all love it or hate it. Um, and while you're doing that in the chat, glad to never take it again. Well, yeah, Brenda. Yes, 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 yes. Um, I'm going to love the MCAT from a distance over, way over there. Um, the last one, last but not least, Ben, who are you? Let the people know. Uh, hey, I'm the, I'm the creative director over here. Uh, Ricky and I and a couple other talented people make uh, all the fun sketches that you get to see on Sketchy. And love the MCAT is, that, that might be the first time those words have passed my lips, uh, to be honest. So uh, out the other side, I, I, I can't say that I love it. I uh, am what I call a reformed urologist. Uh, I went to med school and then started my urology residency and then realized I would much rather make uh, cartoons for a living. <laughs> and uh, Ricky wrote my bio here. So apparently I referenced Nicolas Cage in every meeting. So why don't you just stop? You could just keep, stop. Keep an ear you out. You just did it. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, I feel like you set him up. That was all right. All right, that was. Uh, I'm very happy about this. Um, ben, I'm glad that Ricky got to write it because now I know the real you. Um, so awesome! Hey, this is uh, our wonderful sketchy team here, um, who are gonna pretty much just walk us through the whole step from like uh, step zero ideation. What are like the? How do we come up with ideas? What does the sketch look like? Refining it, et cetera, et cetera. So this is gonna be a good time. We're gonna kind of go through the whole thing, and again, y'all are gonna be able to participate a little bit. First and foremost, I'm just going to throw this out there because I'm the only one who isn't from Sketchy. Hey, what up? I'm with Blueprint. Y'all ever hear of us? Uh, do Actually, I am kind of curious about this. Uh, six in the chat for a thumbs up, nine for a thumbs down. How many of y'all have heard of Blueprint Test Prep before? Awesome. Oh, there's a lot of no's actually. Okay. All right. So this is cool. This is cool. I'm glad that there's at least... Um, well, I hope that everyone in the world knows who we are, but I'm glad that some of us here don't because now I get to tell you. So uh, long story short, we're really dope. Um, I've been teaching MCAT for a very long time, about nine, almost 10 years now. And like real talk, content is content, right? Bernoulli's equation doesn't change from Blueprint to someone else or any of the other test prep people. Uh, but the thing that I love about Blueprint that I honestly wish that I had when I was prepping um, was basically we're built to be digital, right? We're not like an in-person class that's just record and put up there. So we have the study planner tool. It's really, really rad. Um, you put in when you're taking your test, you put in how many days a week you can study and it builds it for you. And it says, hey, this is what you need to do in order to ace the MCAT. Um, so heck yeah, it's really, really awesome. Um, other than that, if we keep going on, we don't just, well, the reason why we're here with Sketchy actually is because we have, dun da 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 a bundle. We have exams plus sketchy, right? So if you pick up uh, four of our Blueprint MCAT exams, you also get a subscription for sketchy. It's super great because um, it's like, I'm going to test myself, but I also have a little bit of resources to learn some things. So super rad. I'm actually really excited about the partnership. Um, 
because I get to hang out with these lovely people. Uh, so besides all of that nonsense, let me go ahead and we do have more things than just tests. Really? Uh, Holly, do, I, I know exactly where you're coming from. Like, I wish that I had most of the resources that my students do now because I was like paper pencil. Well, I'm revealing how old I am now. Like pay no attention to the grays in my hair. But like I had paper pencil, like weekly planners. I didn't have digital flashcards. It was awesome. Uh, no, it was terrible. It's awesome now. <laughs> so hey, these are all of our class offerings. Like I said, I'm a tutor and I'm a live online instructor. So um, yeah, I'm a good representation of like what, you know, a, a fun teacher from Blueprint is like. Uh, but we have a good time. If y'all are interested in any of this stuff, if you want to check out the study planner tool, if you want to get a free, um, our uh, full length from Blueprint, just to kind of see what our tests are like before you dive into the Blueprint sketchy bundle or anything like that, you can try it out for free. I just threw in the chat. That's how you get our uh, free student account where you can like essentially try out all of our things for free. Um, I think it's really awesome. And you get like 1600 digital flashcards for free just for signing up for that. So I tell all my students because I'm all about free, but enough about me. Who are you guys? Who the heck is sketchy? I know a lot of us probably already know, but I want to hear it from the, the mouths of the creators. Uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask the same question that Hunter asked, because I know we actually have uh, folks who came here via Blueprint and came here via sketchy. So let's do a thumbs up, th thumbs up as a six, thumbs down as a nine. Um, if you've heard of sketchy before. And the right. Reason, the reason it's a six and a nine is because... 96% of people score higher when they use Sketchy, right? That's why you pick those numbers, right? <laughs> yeah, that has nothing to do with the way the pictures look. Yeah, that's uh, the only reason. <laughs> again, again, great to see, great, great to see both. So yeah, Sketchy, um, we are a visual learning company. We've got a visual learning platform. Uh, we make videos that look a lot like the ones you are going to see constructed today. Like uh, for real, I think this is the first time we have ever publicly demonstrated how we do this. So like, I know a lot of you here, you know, not studying for the MCAT, even though it's going to be a little bit of MCAT content, but like, I'm glad you're here to like peek behind the curtain. I know when I first started working for Sketchy, I was also very familiar with them and it was super cool to learn. And I'm really glad we get to share that. We're a visual learning company. We make lessons like the ones you're going to see today, along with other learning objects that uh, basically hack your brain to teach you these things in the way your brain wants to learn them. As it turns out, the way we are wired is not, you know, we, we, we didn't all evolve as humans to like read things in books uh, and memorize lists of bullets. What we did evolve to you as humans as uh, see things and remember spaces and remember stories and characters and humor and jokes and people. And so we work really hard to make those lessons, they're not just lessons that are funny and have visuals. They're lessons where the lesson is the visual or the joke or the symbol. And we're going to get to see exactly what that looks like today. Um, across all of our courses, we've got over a thousand lessons. We've been doing this for a long time. And one of the reasons why we're so excited about MCAT is that like low key, y'all prepping for the MCAT, you're going to use sketchy in med school. Just going to like put that out there. <laughs> um, like pretty good bet you're gonna you're gonna use sketchy for at least some of your med school studies and so we know for a fact the kinds of people who go to med school are the kinds of people who benefit from using sketchy and so we're really glad to kind of expand things into the mcat world uh and uh yeah that's what we're we're up to today and as ben said the reason why we use sixes and nines for thumbs up and thumbs down is because sketchy helps and it works yeah, no, I, I, I can't agree more. Um, there's so many times where when I'm emphasizing like the importance of like figures and like just seeing things in different ways and not just trying to read a textbook cover to cover, which, oh my gosh, if anyone is prepping for the MCAT here, if you take one thing, don't read a textbook cover to cover. There are so much more efficient ways to learn. Um, but yeah, I tell my students that like, you've never had to memorize how to go from your front door to your bedroom, right? Like you just do it once and then you know it. Kind of a different thing or a different skill when we're learning how to, the, how to prep for the MCAT, right? So I love that. Yeah. You guys are incorporating like neuroscience and like, Jess, heck yes, you're awesome in the chat. Um, it's, it's, it's awesome. It's fantastic. So we're going to get to, you know, essentially see how the magic happens. That being said, we have some really cool stuff, uh, for everyone in chat actually. So, uh, one, <laughs> I'm just going to say the, the sentence, one lucky participant will win a blueprint and sketchy bundle. So remember that bundle that I was talking about a few minutes ago, where it's four of our full length and then the sketchy subscription. Um, one of y'all here today is just going to win it for free. So that's super dope. Uh, we're going to remind you at the very end, but long story short, at the very end of the webinar, we're going to do a Q and a session. And then, uh, right after that Q and a session, 
We're just going to ask everybody who is with us in chat to throw uh, your name and your target goal MCAT score into the q and They'll give us a list of everyone who responds, and then we're just going to pick someone. Um, Holly, does Blueprint do STEP? Unfortunately, we do not right now. No, we only do MCAT and LSAT. Um, I know, it's a bummer. I wish I could hang out with you too. <laughs> oh, hey, uh, don't throw it in that chat. Actually, with your, uh, with your Zoom settings, there's a button that actually says Q&A. Throw your name and your, your score in that Q&A, um, but do it at the very end. We'll remind you. I just wanted to let all y'all know right now that we've got something cool at the very end for you. Um, so you stick around. <laughs> um, so, hey, we're talking about a few things. Um, first and foremost, we're just going to dive into, oh, I know, I know. Hey, I, I'm right there. If I was about to win some stuff for free, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me get at that. Um, so we're talking about uh, essentially a little bit of biochem, cell bio specifically, and then even more specifically than that, retroviruses, right? Um, so can anyone on the sketchy team, feel free, y'all chime in. Um, anybody tell me like, why, why are we talking about this today? Do y'all have an existing video on this? Is this the first one? Is this our first iteration? Yada, yada, yada. Um, yeah, somebody give me a, a little, little, how come we're talking about this today? Uh, I'll, 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 I'll jump in and talk more. I know it's been a lot of me, but it's going to be a lot of not me as soon as um, I throw things over to the creatives in a moment. Um, the reason why this is a really cool topic for today, we've got a good lot of cell biology already that we've made. And cell biology as a subject for the MCAT, as a lot of you may already know, if you're preparing for the MCAT, I mean, biology as a subject is the highest yield subject for the exam. Um, if you stack all of them together, it's going to, you know, uh, be pound for pound, pound for pound will have the most pounds, as I have said in the past. Um, uh, however, some of biology, a lot of MCAT students feel pretty good about, and they don't feel like they need to like, you know, reinforce and, and, and cram and get it in. But there's always like this stuff at the periphery, which is like, oh, oh, that, oh, that's biology. Whoops. And, you know, your retroviruses, um, you know, things like retrovirus life cycle, uh, as you get into the sort of border between biology and biochemistry, and you kind of get into molecular biology, tend to be in that latter category. And um, a lot of what we found about, um, you know, talking to people who are using Sketchy to prep for the MCAT and lots of other tests, is they really like to use it for a lot of the more challenging subjects. And so uh, we thought this was a really good balance to show how to build a lesson for a challenging subject. And for the record, um, what we make today, which we're going to make with, from, with the input of all of you here, is actually going to be our retrovirus life cycle sketch. Like, you're going to be able to see it, like, a month from now when we post it, a month or two from now. Yeah, whoever uh, wins yeah. is going to be able to go like, oh, yeah, I voted for that, like, when you watch it. So, Adam, yeah, totally right. Um, I love it. I think it's super awesome. And, yeah, I love the fact that you emphasize, like, yeah, a lot of us assume that, like, biology, we got it. A lot of us are bio majors in this pre-med stuff, right? Um, and so we focus on the things that are scary to us, right? Which, just for funsies, I always ask every one of my groups uh, this question, right? So throw in the chat, those of you all that are prepping for the MCAT or about to prep or thinking about prepping, whatever. Um, what are the two, like, topics that you're the most nervous about? Not, like, sections of the test, not, like, chem, phys, bio, biochem, but, like, the science topics. So, like, biochemistry, for one, is one. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. This is literally what I expected. Um, let's see more physics. It breaks my heart because I love physics actually. Um, okay. And there's the other one that I was expecting. And Chris, Chris, you are, you are what I saw in my head. So yeah, usually when I ask this question, every one of my students, or at least the vast majority say physics and they say, okay. Right. And so we focus on these a ton and we neglect just our basic cell bio. Hey, uh, Adam, real quick, man, physics and OCHEM, totally the most popular, like number one, most heavily tested topics on the exam, right? Uh, they're certainly the ones we focus on. They're the ones who stress you out the most. Uh, point for point, you don't run into as many questions on the MCAT, um, you know, and that is an important piece of context. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, they're, they're, they're there, but you wanna be healthy with your relationship with them. Um, uh, so yeah, that's my commentary on that. Yeah, I dig it. And I totally agree. Um, a lot of, a lot of students tend to go, this is something that scares me. I'm going to read a textbook cover to cover and neglect some things like just cell bio, which, which you know, probably got in our, what junior, maybe our, our sophomore one, but like, it's not the case. So let's dive into it. We're talking about biochem right now. We're talking about how to make an awesome video. I, I mean, personally, if you said, Hey, Hunter, make a video, draw something about biochem. I literally would not know where to start. 
So how do y'all even begin this process? Yeah, you, you probably wouldn't think to start here. And just for the record, this is actually a screen grab from uh, the famous Nick Cage movie, Gone in 60 Seconds. <laughs> Knew it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, we're, this is kind of like getting to step into the bat cave or something. Uh, we're going to take you into kind of the heart of what we do at Sketchy. And, and the, the center of that heart, the left ventricle, if you will, uh, is what we call the mind smelt. Um, we couldn't just call it a brainstorming ses uh, session because this is sketchy, so we had to call it something fun. But if you're not sort of up on your ore refinement processes, smelting is when you take the raw ore and sort of dirt and rocks and heat it up really hot until you uh, melt the precious metal out. Um, and so that's what we do in our mind smelt sessions, which we have uh, pretty much every day. We kind of heat up our brains really hot until the really good ideas come pouring out. Uh, and, and fill up the sketches and hopefully we leave the sort of dumb asinine ideas uh, behind in the smelter. I don't know what that thing is actually called, but uh, the idea is we, we all get together and we bounce ideas off each other until we have stuff that we, that we think is really good and memorable and fun. Uh, and that's how we make our sketches. I'm into it. Um, and you actually preemptively answered one of my questions was how often do y'all do this? So this is like an everyday thing. Um, do you guys ever run out of just like top or is there always another video? You know, people need content, Hunter. That's sort of welcome to 2022. I think. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, we, <laughs> we do these every day. Uh, there's a ton of stuff to know for the MCAT. So, uh, you know, we got we to gotta get a lot of stuff out there. I dig never it. run um, out of ideas, though. Sometimes uh, the, the going gets a little tough. Um, is everyone who's with me here, are all of y'all all in the minds? And actually, uh, Ben, uh, also, I'm glad that you cleared this up. It's not mines melt, right? It's mines smelt. <laughs> it's not mines melt, although sometimes that does happen. It is a, a <laughs> right. mind smelt. Yes, that's right. So yeah, uh, back to the, the original question. Is everyone who's kind of with us here part of these mind smelts? Yes. A little yes, little yes. Heck yes. So that's awesome. So um, Corey, I'm actually, I'm glad that you chimed in. I'm going to toss it to you for two seconds. Um, Correct me if I'm wrong, but you don't come from a super like medical background, right? Not not a super medical background, no. Okay, um, All right. No no Kryptonians <laughs> or anything like no, that. No, no, no. My back my background is strictly uh, comic books and animation. I've worked at some uh, pretty major studios in the LA area, and um, you know, uh, this has been uh, way funnier than working on any cartoon show I have. I gotta say, I'm into it. It's honestly, it's probably helping people more too. Um, I wouldn't like, know. <laughs> what's it don't sell yourself short what's it like for you sitting in on these mind smelts like do you oh. uh, is it just a lot of like technical jargon or do well you, like, sometimes really... it, sometimes it could be very enlightening but usually uh it's just like yeah totally over my head okay. <laughs> so uh the great thing is that you know they're very uh you know good at breaking these concepts down in a way that you know you guys can go ahead and deal with them and uh, elaborate on that visually which, yeah, and, and I love that because that means like if, if everyone else on the call here can break it down and say like, hey, so I need you to absolutely like sit down and like draw this thing and it represents all these crazy terms that you've probably never even considered, right? That's but like, right. I'm, I'm giving you, I'm teeing up the, the opportunity for you to compliment everyone here. Do they, so they're all talented enough and awesome enough that they can break the, break it down, make it simple for you to understand. And then like, you can then do some awesome sketches, right? That's correct. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they, they do an amazing job. And uh, like I said, uh, you know, working with this team is uh, on par with working with uh, any animation, like writing team I've worked with. So um, kudos to the team here. Take them um, out, guys. Aw, you guys are so nice to each other. Um, when, <laughs> so when, when's the transfer really from when it's predominantly all of the pre-med medical jargon to, okay, now we're done with that essentially. And like, Corey, it's in your hands. And then like, yeah, what does that look like? Oh, and as far as like the product that comes, the finished visual product. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, I guess. It's something we call, and this is another made up term, pre-sketch. And, um, you know, a pre-sketch is uh, what by any other standard would be called a rough drawing or a sketch. Uh, and that rough drawing is then turned into our final artwork. You know, we have a, a slew of contract artists who we uh, use to carry these things out. And, you know, we have several check-in points. So, we know, you know, always being very careful that the content is being skewed. You know, they have creative license, but we don't want them grouping things incorrectly, et cetera. Love it. Right. And um, you, you mentioned a pre-sketch. Is that what this guy is right here? That's exactly what that is. Wonderful. And then, yeah, y'all can see that, like, it starts as a pre-sketch and then it goes to this beautiful thing. Are you responsible for this? 
Uh, not that one, but yes. Is yeah, that but you, uh, you are responsible for the rim lights, I the would The rim say. lights, though. <laughs> <laughs> very essential. It's very essential. Yeah. Um, it's, it's so yeah, little this... details that brings a scene to life, you know, and that's that's really I think one of the the places where Corey adds so much is he helps add those little touches that really make it pop, which is awesome, right? Because it's so easy just to like go with super generic cartoons, right, or like anything like that. But Corey, yeah, like if you look at every inch of this, there's like detail and there's life in it, and there's like all these little touches that I'm assuming come from yourself and like a whole bunch of other artists on the team, right? Yeah, um, you know, as art director, I always encourage these artists to you know have fun you know we want to be funny we want to look for characterizations expressions things that are going to be you know super memorable you know and color color is really important too yeah yeah yeah. and like yeah i love the tones and everything so someone um actually let me uh, throw it over to you ricky because i believe you are um, a little bit of a, of a well i mean not a little bit you are a lot of bit of an expert but um can you kind of explain to me like what that going from the pre-sketch to the actual one looks like and then if you don't mind like at the very end Let's talk about like what this sketch is representing, if that's okay. Because I'm super yeah. curious what like robot man over here, who he is in the body, right? So yeah, Ricky, take it away. Yeah, so uh, the the pre-sketch is really there to help the, the artist who does the final sketch kind of see where things are supposed to go because it's really important that certain symbols are grouped together and that the background is a certain way. Uh, so it, it really is uh, helpful for them to not have to just go based off of our you know, borderline terrible descriptions in the scripts. So uh, that- Corey, can uh, you confirm or deny the terribleness? No. <laughs> oh yeah, no, <laughs> there's <laughs> Sorry. Corey, sorry. Corey has signed yeah. multiple NDAs yeah. specifically yeah. on that point. Corey knows better. <laughs> um, so yeah, we, I mean, we're constantly having conversations with the artists who are doing these, uh, you know, about how things need to change or, you know, what they should do in the next iteration. Um, and it's usually pretty smooth. Uh, this, despite the the Corey and not confirming or denying things are bad. Uh, and then this particular sketch is for the sympathetic nervous system. And that's why it takes place in the fights and flights bar where you can get wine and get your butt kicked. I'm into it. I'm super into it. Um, and yeah, let's actually like, so yeah, this is uh, sympathetic. Heck yes. Um, Oh man, I, I lost my pen. So my mouse is terrible. That's okay though. So sympathetic nerve system. Absolutely love it. Um, I'm like peeking around and there are so many little things in here, right? Like this is almost like a, like an I spy for me. So we've got a heart sign in like 120. What does that mean? What do you, you remember that one, Hunter? <laughs> <laughs> no, so that, that's actually rates maybe other stuff this, right yeah 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 so this is actually so a re recurring sketchy symbol is sort of the raised heart watch or heart clock uh which represents tachycardia increased heart rate love it love it are there any other are there any other small little things that i'm missing here flights and flights oh, the, uh, the spine on this guy's this guy's a uh, vest the guy's vest yeah, he's sitting at the oh, bar. right here. Oh, because yeah. yep, 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 it goes through your spine accord. Love it. And even the chat's like throwing in here. Yeah, it, right, guys? It's like a, it's like an I spy. This is super rad. Yeah, um, the, the sympathetic Penny. chains back there on the in the sort of right on the background. Oh, chains. I dig it. I dig it. What else is there? The snack bar is closed. Is that? <laughs> that was that, that came totally from the chat. They're on top yep. of this. Yeah, they realize exactly what that is. That the, oh, uh, the snack bar is closed. I love it. I love it. And you know what? I'm not even too, too proud to admit like, yeah, the uh, Masha, can you tell me what is the shark fin or anyone here? What, what's the deal with the shark fin here? Is the dude just super rad? <laughs> Dorsal. There we go. Okay. Nice. <laughs> um, and I love it. You're not used to hearing Ricky's voice at one X speed. <laughs> <Everyone's laughs> <through. laughs> oh, Ricky, are you the voice in some of these too? Yeah. Some of them. Oh my goodness. That's yeah. super awesome. <laughs> If yeah, we we, we, other, we buried um, the lead on that, especially for those of here, those of those of you who are familiar, who are, who are in med school studying for the step. The the Ricky J is here today in person. Uh, <laughs> so yes, a lot, a lot of people are very familiar with her. I am a monster, Ricky. I am so sorry. I did not realize I was in the How of royalty. Could you? <laughs> I'm so sorry. Please no, accept please my apology. <laughs> it's like with it, honestly, you know what? It, full disclosure, it's like Jess when like Jess first hopped in here. I was like, oh great, you got someone watching the chat. And Adam was like, actually, <laughs> Jess is our direct. I was like, oh man, sorry about that. But hey, uh, it's just just goes to show you that like everyone in Sketchy is super awesome and y'all, y'all help out everywhere, right? Um 
did we miss anything? I do want to feel, I feel like this is an I spy and I want to finish it before we move on. I think we're good. There's another any there. I think we're good. How about y'all? I feel like y'all have the answers and you're hiding it from me. One fun one is the reason that guy has spiked hair is because uh, sympathetic stimulation produces pilo erection, causes your hair to stand up. I love it. I'm into it. Yeah. Okay. So, hey, this is kind of the level of detail that y'all are in for um, and that y'all are going to kind of help influence later. So, heck yes. And wait, um, and aren't those ducks the bronchioles? Not the last one we missed. Yep. Bronchioles. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I feel <clears throat> insane. Did you say ducks? Are there ducks in this picture that I don't see? <laughs> yeah, ducks. Ducks. Yeah. Oh, you see D U C T. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> Let me have some more of my caffeinated tea. Um, thank you, Brenda. Thank you so much. <laughs> so, hey, um, oh, let me let me clear all my drawings really quickly. Okay, so that is like generally the process, how it happens, right? We start with the pre-sketch, lots of input. Well, actually, we start with the mind smelt gets turned into an idea, gets turned into a pre-sketch, post-sketch, tons of detail into it. We're talking scale, cell bio. And what do these four, what do these four images kind of have in theme or along? Like, why are they all here, Ben? Why did we put these pictures in the slideshow? Um, so it can be kind of intimidating when you're starting a new mind smell and you're like, all right, we got to symbolize the retroviral life cycle. Where, where do we even start? Um, and so one thing that we've done for Sketchy MCAT is each course is themed around a different genre or idea or, or family in one case. So our cell bio course uh, has a space theme. So anytime you see a space sketch uh, in the MCAT course, you know you're in cell bio. If you see the Dalton family, you know you're in our general chemistry course. If you're on a college campus, you're in our orgo course. Um, and so that's just a way to get you back into the sketch really quickly and to help you sort of immediately identify where you are. So you can see these four sketches all look a little different, but they all have a, a more or less aggressive spacey vibe about them. And I'm sure it like helps you guys kind of organize like your thoughts, like, okay, now we're working on this one. And then that way you don't have to come up with like new scenes and reinvent the wheel every time Corey's over here, like, oh my gosh, thank you. Um, but yeah, I'm sure this is a good thing for the students, right? And just like psychology, like getting back into familiar territory and you're like back into that topic, right? Is that kind of, is that one of the reasons for this as well? Yeah, we want to, we want to provide that little hook. Yeah, that way they just kind of know they're back into it. Love it. Um, so all of these are cell bio. Um, is what we're making today going to be a part of this story as well? Uh, spoilers, there's some, there's some extraterrestrial stuff. So I'm assuming yes. I'm getting a lot of, a lot of sly grins here. Uh, yes, it, <laughs> it, it will be. Yeah, we're uh, cell bio. So we know we're going to be in space, um, but we're going to get your guys' help with, with some of the specifics there. It. heck yeah um hey just for funsies does anyone off the top of their head know some of the things we should be paying attention in these pictures i feel I, every time every time i see one of these now i just want to play an i spy do you recognize what sketches these are yeah we had a, a couple we had a couple call outs in the chat already actually but I, I, yeah. even if you haven't seen that can you guys guess the the third one the bottom left bottom left is kind yeah. of like, yeah oh yeah, yeah. 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 cycle right. you guys got this yep Look at this G1, G2, wonderful. Um, I like how you guys have like specific things inside of each one of the steps too, to kind of remember it. Um, property of sketchy egg multiplier. Okay, all right, all right. I see, I see what we're doing here. Yeah, you guys are clever. You guys are clever. I'll give you that much. I'll give you that much. Um, awesome, so let's keep going. Hey guys, remember how we keep saying that you're gonna choose something? Oh, let's choose something. Yeah, um, so it, yeah, man. Ben, do you wanna walk us through what we're about to do? Yeah, so this is kind of how we start a mind smelt is where where should this be set? Where, you know, where's this scene going to take place? And so, okay, so we know for this uh, lesson on the retroviral life cycle that we're, we've got some spacey vibes uh, going on. Um, and we thought it would be cool to use kind of a space station to represent the eukaryotic cell. And then we, we can have some alien invaders to represent the sort of retrovirus. Um, but we want to give you guys some latitude to pick where that's going to be and, and what kind of feel that's going to have. So, you know, are we going to be on some sinister moon somewhere? Are we going to be off in the distant reaches of space? Or are we going to be, you know, just like chilling on uh, Earth? Like, I absolutely love it. So, hey, I'm actually going to launch a poll through Zoom, y'all. Um, a little box should have popped up. It says choice one, two, or three. Go ahead and throw in your answer choice. We'll populate that in. 
Um, and while this is being answered, uh, Corey, I'm going to throw this one to you. So you, did you draw all three of these? I did. Okay. Wonderful. Um, after drawing these and we pick one right now, are the other two just going in the garbage? They will go in very special garbage. <laughs> yes. It's a digital garbage. Okay. Oh no, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, and we were getting a ton of response in the chat. Hey, question. Do any of y'all see a poll that popped up? Like it should be a separate window through Zoom. <laughs> says choose wisely, choice one, choice two, choice three. I saw nine. <laughs> uh, yeah, nine right there means that they're not seeing it. Huh, all right. It says poll is closed. Oh no. Well, all right, let me let me relaunch it. Boop. There we go. There we Let's are. try it again. Hey, wonderful. Because yeah, we love all the responses in the chat, but this is, this is, democrat this is democracy. Dang it, we want to count democracy. every vote. It says hosts and panelists can't vote. I want to put my thumb on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> there's a reason I there's a reason I joined this meeting with six sock yeah. puppet accounts. Come on. <laughs> uh, oh my goodness. Okay. It looks like we got about 75 people that are participating right now. Um, I'm not gonna reveal who's in the lead or anything like that. Go ahead and get your votes and we'll give it about like 30 more seconds or so. Um, but Corey, I want to throw it back to you because like I am so far removed from like the artistic realm. So like I just have a billion questions for you, man. Um sure, man. Sure. With each one of these, one, two, and three, how long does it take you to come up with just one of them? Uh, I think this whole little sheet of uh, what I would consider thumbnail sketches is about maybe 10, 15 minutes worth of work. When you say uh, the whole sheet, like one, two, and three, like you crank all these out? One, two, and three. Two. That's correct. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, now I can see why you guys do mind smelts every morning. <laughs> of course. I was just trying yeah, to say like yeah. a couple days. I mean, you learn to cut some visual corners, uh, you know. Photoshop is great, you know, it allows you to fill things in pretty quickly. So, uh, you know, do what we can, we, you know, usually get to, uh, you know, the end point we need to be at. Yeah, these are pretty, uh, pretty rough, but, you know, they get the, get the yeah, job done. Look, Corey is, Corey is great, but as you can tell from the little rectangles there, coloring inside the lines is not one. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, Corey, yeah, you're, you're a pro, man. I, like, this is, this is awesome. Um, God, this would have taken me forever. I, well, I mean, I couldn't even have done it, period. So that's awesome. Um, we've been going for about a minute and 45 seconds now. Uh, let's do about five more seconds to get those last couple of votes in. And let's uh, speak now forever. Hold your peace. Five, four, a three, a two, one. Y'all remember the Tootsie Pop Owl? Yeah. That's what that just reminded me of. Um, so let's go ahead and share the results. And dun, 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 dun. number two is our winner. Two is. Yes. Woo. Hey, we're in space. Yeah, yeah, we're in space. We're not on a planet. We're not on a moon. We are in space. So heck yeah. Um, oh, it's giving me alien vibes now. Like in space, no one can hear you replicate. <laughs> 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 um, so Corey, <laughs> number two here. Um, I'm sure you're gonna remember that. So you know, if you if you need a if if you forget or anything, let me know. But um, actually, Corey, keep me honest here. You're going to be incorporating some of these, yes, into the actual video and and all that. Um. But we're going to be drawing live today. That's separate from this, right? That's correct. Gotcha. So when Corey does share their screen, um, please don't be like, what the heck? Where's number two? Because uh, that will be coming up in the finished version. Uh, so let me go ahead and clear this. And actually, with that being said, uh, before we go to the next one, I believe, Corey, you, like, can you kind of show us like, yeah, let me, some uh... of the magic that happens here? Yeah, Corey, show us the magic, Corey. Oh, <laughs> oh you guys want to see the magic? So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. You can go ahead and take over. Let's do this. This is crazy. For someone who's done this a lot of times, th this part never fails to be awesome. I'm so excited. So Corey, uh, walk us through what you're doing now. So uh, you know, a, a big part of you know a mind smelt is me trying to figure out like uh, which concept gets how much real estate. You know, in this case, uh, there's a lot of stuff going on, but it all goes on more or less inside this uh, space station. So it's going to take up a, a great bulk of um, our space here. And when I say space, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, you're talking about space. Yeah, space. <laughs> hey, space, time, all that right. stuff. Right. Yeah, that, that so, place that's like the final frontier. So this is going to be our space station. Well, Unrelated, but I definitely went to the Star Trek exhibit that's in LA right now. And it was oh, awesome. How did I, go? I was great and I dressed up. Yes, I did. It's awesome. Uh -huh. <laughs> So it is in space, so we don't need to have it sitting on anything. And one of the more interesting things we can do is add little spacey details. Oop. 
Feet you're very welcome, Lizzie. <laughs> if you're not uh, if you're not making little sound effects while you're drawing, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> or his little space lines are like a true hallmark of his style. These little extra panels and stuff that give it space flavor. I love it. It's um yeah, they're like little gribbles or something, right? Just little shapes that don't really do much. Um, I forgot what they were called. They put them on all the miniatures when they do sci-fis. Um, and Greebles. hey, Corey, I know you're Greebles oh. is the word. I had to look it really? up. They're called <laughs> Greebles. Little Greebles. All the all the little dudes and dads and 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 weird little scratches and uh and 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 circle things they put on all those models for is that, that a generic Greebles. term. Uh, yeah, it's just, it includes like all the random shapes. So actually the reason why I brought this up uh, is at the Star Trek exhibit, why can't I stop talking about this? They had the actual board cube miniature that it's not a miniature. It's like, you know, three feet by three feet. Um, and yeah, you just look at it and they're like, put a square right here. Why? I don't know. It looks good. Do it. Um, and Corey, I do, you're super busy right now, but I want to, I want to share this with you because uh, it's, it's, it's important. Uh, somebody through just a host and panelists. Hey, they're geeking out about this right now. Comic book artists are brilliant, especially Corey. Oh, that's so sweet. On that word. Um, I, I looked you. away for two seconds and now we're in space. So that's great. Um, but there's, yeah, there's just a whole bunch of, a whole bunch of love for you in the chat, Corey. Like Corey's amazing. You should see what these look like when we drew these. <laughs> that's, a funny, that's a funny point, Jess. Yeah, we, yeah. so. Like Ricky and I used to draw these and not, and not well, we're yeah. not good at this. <laughs> <laughs> so how did that come about? Actually, did y'all kind of sit down and like, after a little while, like you were, you know, you were making your own things and it was good to a point, but then when were you like, all right, we need a pro. We need some help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We I used think... to, we used oh, to go ahead, no, we used to draw these pre-sketches and uh, yeah, like you said, it was kind of a mess. Yeah, one of the one of the hardest things to do uh, as somebody who is not an artist is like to to get the perspective that Corey gets. Like, I would never think to to tilt this space station in the way he has and like fit everything in it. I always think of everything straight on, so it was always really difficult to get all the symbols in in a way that's like aesthetically pleasing. Yeah, so, one of the neat things you want to do, I think, is like uh, your your part camera because you're trying to place a camera somewhere to get the most interesting shot. But you're also a projector because you know you're imagining something and sort of projecting it onto the you know the picture plane and and trying to almost trace that out or make it you know come true. That makes yeah, you sense. said that you used to live in Los Angeles, right, Corey? Yes, cur currently in LA County, still. So, yes, makes sense. Oh, People yeah. in LA talk about directors and cameras every other second. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. I'm just yeah, kidding. Yeah. I'm just as guilty. I'm in LA too. <laughs> yeah, I explained my uh, theories to my kids uh, using you know film lingo. So yeah, <laughs> it's super cool. Um, and yeah, in case anyone missed it, you, if you blinked, you definitely just missed Corey like do a background nebula in like two seconds. That was uh, I don't know. This is super crazy. Um, I'm, I'm very much impressed, my friend. So uh -huh. what is this going to turn into at the end? So when I went back, Ricky. Oh no, no pressure staying in the lines. Yeah, I, yeah, I told you, everybody's got a weakness. <laughs> uh, yes. So this is gonna be inside here and then the other fun stuff is going on. So at this point during a mind smelt, you know, I would be uh, listening to the content uh, managers and the creative directors talking about, you know, the concepts, uh, the characters, you know, what the symbols are, where they need to be and uh, just sort of, Folding that, folding that all in here. Well, usually at this point, we're giving you really annoying directions. Like, ah, actually, maybe let's not make this a space, and let's not make this in space either. Can we have this on <laughs> a tropical beach somewhere? <laughs> so, so that's actually brings up a really interesting point because Corey, I was way overestimating the amount of time that it takes you to whip one of these up. Um, are you like drawing during the mind smelt, like kind of as they're doing this like stream yes. of consciousness? We should do this. You're just kind of interpreting at the same time. Correct, correct. So I mean, uh, if you know, uh, I'm not sharing screen. Let's say at the very beginning of the smelt, and you know, there's some deliberation going on about something. I may be drawing what they're talking about, knowing full well that these drawings will probably never be seen. By the time I do share screen, you know, they have the idea pretty well like gelled. You know what I mean? They know what they're talking about, where it's going and uh, are ready to impart that upon me. So I usually don't have to share those, uh, those trashy little drawings. You know? so, so we kind of take advantage of that and we'll start out saying just some absolutely outlandish things just to make mm -hmm. people draw ridiculous stuff that we're not gonna use. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm so glad you said, I was literally just about to ask Corey, is there ever a time where like they give you recommendations? You're like, no, like I can't do that. Like, what are you I'm doing? I'm not doing that. <laughs> yeah, is no, there, is that, does all. that ever happen? Uh, outlandish uh, uh, suggestions you mean? 
yeah yeah do you have veto power over some of these and you're like no this is this is absolutely absurd oh uh no i mean conceptually i i wouldn't but uh in terms of like oh let's not place it over there you know maybe this is a better idea sure you know they'll uh they'll hear me out at least the only, the only time Corey ever says no is when we tell him to draw inside the lines <laughs> <laughs> apparently <laughs> And just in short, like you can't out ridiculous Corey. Like whatever we think of, Corey could think of something 10 times more ridiculous. And yeah, Ricky, that's kind of where I was going. Cause y'all said like, sometimes we'll just throw the most outlandish stuff. And like, I was wondering if Corey ever gives you like the, like just what stoic are you- face. He's like, yeah, that's a great idea. <laughs> not, not creative enough. That's what we hear. Do it. We're going to take that. And then two more times. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. This is awesome. I mean, from a cartoon standpoint, I mean, sketchy is kind of a dream come true. You get to help people, but you're also- like given license to do some pretty ridiculous, you know, fart jokes and, you know, there's poop and pee and, you know, what more do you want, really? Yeah. You, know? you know what? It, we, we prefer instead of poopologist, it's scatologist. Okay. It's very much more professional. Um, <laughs> I used to work at a nonprofit for kids and like, oh my God, I told them that all the time and they would just love it. Um, they didn't know that there actually was like literally poop doctors. I'm like, yeah, dude, there totally are. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's a good time. Oh, actually, I'm curious. You would, what is Never mind. I'm just going to go look for myself what your guys' video on the GI tract looks like. That'll be fun. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> don't break my heart and tell me there isn't one because there definitely is. Wait till um, you do the one on spermatogenesis, Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm taking notes. Everyone else in the chat is I like, wonder, right, I, I wonder gotta... when we, if when we get into that specialty, we'll play around with our naming convention and rather than calling like, you know, uh, like typically we go like sketchy farm or like sketchy I am like, but we could do like sketchy medical. <laughs> wait hold on is never mind <laughs> that's fantastic so yeah i'm into it you know what you know what in the spirit of democracy and collaboration everyone in the chat just we're not going to do an official one thumbs up thumbs down should they name their their next one what is it sketchy medical sketchy medical i want to see a lot of thumbs downs in the chat <laughs> don't make us do that <laughs> The people have spoken. I'm I'm ending this. I'm ending the poll immediately after the first nine popped up. It's only six. <laughs> so we'll uh, we'll Thank not you, count that one as an official vote. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all um keep it keep it kicking around in your head. Um. So Corey, when you're going through this, right? So we're are we at a done point or are we still kind of going on? Like, what is, is this the pre sketch? Right. Uh, this is still pre sketch stuff. You know, I'm adding a little bit of color just because we're on a space background here. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a little harder to see something that's, um, you know, on a darker background. So uh, just to kind of keep things a little bit more separated, I'm adding a little color as I go here. I'm super into it. Um, (laughs) That's such a good point. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Mom, please help me pay for this sketchy thing. (laughs) No, it's great. It's because they draw sketches. Look at Corey. He's incredible. (laughs) Um, So when you get it to about like this point, right, Um, or maybe even a little further than this, would that be time to toss it back to the team, do another mind smell, see where we're going, and then do you guys kind of like collaborate again, or what's the process there? Usually, it's one one smelt. Uh, you get one pre sketch. You know, I mean, very rarely is there a uh, smelt session where there's not a finished, you know, pre sketch at the end of it. It does happen if you know maybe you know a uh, sort of consensus wasn't met or this idea just isn't working or it needs a little uh, you know workshopping. Uh, but generally speaking, man, you know, <laughs> one uh, mind spell, one pre sketch, one and done. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. You guys are crushing it. Um, so yeah, are we? Uh, is this kind of the point where you'd be satisfied, going like, yeah, yeah, this is good enough. They can get the idea from it. Uh, more or less, yeah. I feel like, uh, you know, as far as a ship, at least, you know, uh, this is going on. I you know, I know that this is being uh, kind of blasted open in terms of. Uh, a cutaway so that we can kind of see what's going on inside. Um, you know, let's say we've got a ship that's landing here, an alien invader. So I want to have them land right about here. And we're going to go with our old school kind of. Chef's kiss. Is there really a better alien design? Than, well, <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to start this debate. There's a lot of sci fi fans in here. Um, oh, hey, well, Holly's got a good question for us. Um, did the sketches take longer when they have more information? There's some old videos that are super long, very detailed. Um, would those be still be done in that style today? Uh, yeah, it's a great question. Um, I mean, definitely the more content, you know, the more symbols we have to think of, the longer something's going to take. Um, and so, yeah, some of our old sketches are definitely a little on the longer side. And 
uh, those often took more than a day for sure. Um, but it's not just the amount of content. Uh, sometimes things are just hard and it's not even necessarily the things that you would uh, predict. Um, we did one recently uh, for med students on the coagulation cascade where we did the whole thing and then we, we scrapped it uh, and had to start over. So uh, sometimes it's just a little unpredictable what's gonna take long and what's gonna be quick and easy. And is that just because you guys have like such a high like quality of standard that like that one that you scrapped, for instance, you just said like it's not turned out the way we wanted and start from zero? Exactly. Awesome. Um, heck yeah, you guys rock. Um, love it. Is that, well, first of all, uh, Corey, people in the chat are already like emotionally attached to your characters, FYI. Um, one of the aliens, <laughs> apparently you made them sad and like it's, it's affecting us. Uh, uh, there's going to be some happy aliens in this. Should we... Uh... Awesome. Should we uh, offer offer a choice here about where we're going to go with our sort of first big symbol? Mm. I'm super into it, y'all. Ben's shooting from the hip now. Like this is uncharted territory. What'd you have in mind, Ben? No, I think we we got a, a little pole set up for it, don't we? I, I don't shoot from the hip. I'm a dumb Un man. <laughs> Let's see. There's liability if you shoot from the hip. <laughs> Um, hey, it's, it's, it's MCAT math. You, it's, you, you do some rounding and some estimations. Yeah. Um, uh, hand wavy. <laughs> um, hey, gravity's 10, whatever. Um, uh, so, uh, yeah, I think you're right, actually. So Corey, if you don't mind, I'm actually going to steal, um, the screen from you. Keep doing you what do you're you, doing. Man. Keep doing what you're doing. And, uh, yeah, let's come on back real fast. And we do, we have one more. Um, we actually have, uh, we've got one more coming on even later too. Um, but hey, here's another one of our symbols. Um, and actually let's define that term real fast, Ben. So you said symbols, what do you guys consider symbols? So symbols are sort of the, the memory hooks for each uh, topic or, or sort of, almost if you think of a lesson as an outline, uh, each head point in the outline gets a symbol, uh, a little image or character or something to help you remember that main point. So awesome, yeah. and we're in space. I see this wonderfully like strong, awesome individual with like a four here and a four here, 4,000. There's four of them over here. So yeah, what's, what's going on here, Ricky? All right. So the first piece of scientific information that we need to depict is the CD4 receptor. <clears throat> so that's a protein or a receptor, obviously, that's found on the surface of certain immune cells. And the most common one that you'll hear about in regards to HIV is helper T cells. And I'm going to have Ben explain these, these so, symbols. So we got, we want to symbolize the CD4 positives. <coughs> so we got sort of three choices for you here, three different ways of capturing that idea. So uh, our first one is what I called earlier today, the airplane helper lady. And what I was told is actually called a space marshal. Uh, so that's our space marshal who helps uh, ships land in this space station. You can see that as all spacesuits do, she's got some cool strappies on her and her strappies happen to make the shape of a four for the CD4 cell. So she's CD4 cell and she's helping. Uh, in slot number two, we have the Helpertron 4000. The Helpertron kind of holds the, the landing bay doors open so that spaceships can land. Also super helpful. Uh, and it's got a four shape tool that it uses to help it keep the doors open. Uh, okay. Two, so I'm gonna say one. I wasn't an English major, don't judge. Uh, so, Space Marshall, and which one was this one? The Helpertron. This is the Helpertron 4000. 4000, <laughs> love it. Because who wants to do 3000? No, 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 the old model. Look, this is how <laughs> we, we wanted to give you guys sort of an honest view inside a smell. And so, if you remember from my little slide about ore refining, sometimes there's some hot garbage. So, here's a hot garbage idea for you uh, four space people helping with the space door on the spaceship. Boo. Boo. Don't vote for this one. <laughs> uh, Watch, yeah, people we, are going to pick, guys, yeah. people are going to pick three. People I'm going to pick anything. this now out of spite. Gonna, exactly, exactly. <laughs> just, <here's laughs> so, the thing. hey, y'all. spite me, just remember I would just say, Corey yeah, think about that. Corey. Do you really <laughs> yeah, want to yeah, make Corey, Corey draw that? <laughs> Again. Do you Look how much love you put into that helper drop. Wow, I um real talk just from hanging out with you guys for a little bit, like I want to be a part of your mind smells now. Um, seems like it's a good time. So yeah, y'all are already starting to see that I um have opened up a poll. Go ahead and vote for whichever one you prefer. Um, no, no, no biases, no preference. One, no two, no three. They are all... all between one and two. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> awesome. Um, so while uh, while these are popping in, we'll give it about like oh, 30 sure. seconds or so. Um, ben, quick question. Uh, so we we don't like number three. Please tell me that number three was uh, suggested by you and not one of these other lovely people. On the- if, there's a, if there's a dumb idea around, there's a good chance it came out of my mouth. Yeah, 50-50 shot. <laughs> you know, the twist here's is a- there's only two people in the room, so. Uh, yeah, I was the other 50. Here's the thing, though. I, I, you know, it, it can be hard, especially when people start at Sketchy, to come into these meetings and, and open their mouth and, and share ideas. And the, the sort of rule of thumb we have is that if you think an idea is dumb, a third of the time, you're just wrong. And it's actually a really cool idea or it's hilarious or something. A third of the time, okay, it's maybe not a great idea, but it's going to spark a good conversation. We'll come up with a good symbol as a result of you saying your dumb idea. And a third of the time, it's just a really dumb idea. Uh, (laughs) But we're all friendly. So uh, we just want people to open their mouth and and share their dumb idea. I'm into that. It's a statistics game, you know, like it's just one third of them are good. You just got to have a lot more suggestions. Um, Helpertron is missing a finger. Yeah, oh. Helpertron should probably have four fingers. Since yeah, that's, that's a really good. Four. That's a really good suggestion. Thanks, that's John. a really good suggestion. And actually, uh, I'm glad that you had that suggestion, John, because I'm gonna close this down in five, four, three, two. Last votes. One, and I'm ending the poll. Uh, so hey, everybody, let me share the results. Uh, <laughs> oh, wow. that is now going to have wow. four fingers. I'll draw the fourth. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that is the winner. So, Hey, uh, two things. Number one, we definitely better see helper Tron 4,000 and number two, uh, Corey and or rest of team. Will there be four fingers? I guess we're going to see, huh? Yeah. You have to, <laughs> that, to Corey, sketch out to find out. King of the <laughs> king of the, I can neither confirm nor deny. They're so I love my it. Lessons. Yeah. Whoever voted um, for choice three, you're bringing shame on your family right now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, mean, I, I respect them taking the stance. Right? I was going to say, I can't blame them because like, I probably would have done the same thing. Um, <laughs> so, hey, that's awesome. Let's dive into a question really quickly. Um, so we've got a couple other questions uh, that are going to be, <laughs> sorry, I'm glad you're having a good time. Um, we're going to be uh, doing a couple other questions, but let's just dive into the first one, right? So hey, remember that the point of all these mind smelts and all these symbols and all the videos is so that you can do well on the test, right? So this is more my realm of expertise and I'm gonna speak for Adam as well. Um, Adam as well, uh, right, right, right? Yeah, yeah, I got the thumbs up there. So the two of us are gonna kind of like talk through this. Um, and again, for everyone in here who is prepping for the MCAT, there's a handful of things that you need to know about the exam. Um, for those of you who are prepping for your step, you already know these, so feel free to confirm or, I mean, deny in the chat. Um, but the MCAT itself, yeah, it's a critical, it's, it's not just a regurgitation test. It is a critical thinking test and a logic test, right? So yes, you have to know a ton of content. It is essentially four years of undergraduate science that you kind of have to cram into one exam, right? The good news is that even though it's a mile wide, it's only an inch deep. So you don't need to know a ton about it, but you got to know enough, right? And here's the kicker. The MCAT doesn't reward you for just knowing your content. It like expects you to know your content. So like, that's not how you get your points. You get your points by knowing your content and then applying it to brand new things. So that's what we're going to try to teach you. We're going to give you some of the strategies because mastering the MCAT, it's a third content. It's a third practice. And that's a third knowing the tests and the ins and outs and the little ways that you can kind of pick it apart. So this question, first and foremost, through which mechanism does HIV replicate upon infection of a host cell? Um, Adam, help me out here. What is like, just from the question stem, what do I like, what am I going to pick up on? First of all, we're talking about HIV, right? And replication. So these are two things super important. What is, uh, I guess, I don't try not to give away the answer. HIV is a virus. It's a certain kind, right? Uh, and that's what you need to kind of think about. I'm just, it's a, it's a retrovirus. I'm just going to say, it. I'm just going to say, it. I'm trying to beat around the bush here. It's a retrovirus and they're it's asking still about still wearing bell bottoms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Super retro. It's got an Afro, et cetera, et cetera. So how would you like approach a question like this? If you were fresh face uh, taking your MCAT for the very first time? Yeah. I mean, this, this almost has the form of like a fill in the blank question. Like, 
uh, with you were taking this on your actual biology final or something, you know, this might actually just be something with an open line underneath it where, you know, you'll be graded on whether you can kind of generate, of course, the MCAT's a multiple choice test. And in some ways, of course, that makes it easier because the right answer is somewhere up there. But in some ways, it makes it harder because if you actually like kind of know it, digging through, like this happens to be a question with a pretty short question stem and pretty long answer choices. And a lot of the process of succeeding on the MCAT is just this cognition of getting through the question, kind of like getting through here, this word here, this part here, this separation here. So I'm gonna be looking for patterns in the answer choices um, that will help me kind of eliminate things quickly uh, because that's what I like with long answer choices. Um, the MCAT will have some something rotten in every choice that's wrong. And so you kind of like search for that. Um, and that's, that's one of the things I'm thinking about doing. Yeah, I love it. And um, <laughs> hey, have we, we taught before? Like, um, so all of these answer choices, A, B, and C, and D, right? I call them two-parters, two-part answer choices. Um, Cause really there's two things that you really need to pay attention to. Can anyone in the chat throw out um, what it is those two parts might be? Um, and Anika, you were 100% right, but you just sent that, that chat to host and panelists. So I'm going to say it so that everyone knows your brilliance. Um, we do know that reverse transcriptase is somehow involved because of retroviruses, right? So let's see what else everyone else is saying. Uh, Masha, RNA and single-stranded, love it. So, <laughs> yeah, something rotten in every answer choice. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Um, so I think that's fantastic. Transcribe versus reverse, single versus double, a hundred percent. So this is kind of what I want y'all to start paying attention to. And this is what I spend a lot of time with my tutoring students and in my classes, like training people how to see. Um, content is content. Like, sure, we can all slap stuff on a flashcard and memorize it, but like the MCAT requires skills, right? Like critical reading is a skill that unfortunately most of us were never really taught or like really practiced when we were going through like, you know, our undergraduate or anything like that. Um, here's a different skill and it's finding these, these patterns, these two parters. So yeah, I a hundred percent agree with what pretty much all of y'all say. So it's either first it reverse transcribes, first it transcribes, first reverse transcribes or first transcribes. So right off the bat, I mean, well, actually, no, let's do the other one. Right. And then the other one's double stranded, uh, well, phage proteins, uh, single stranded, or we turn it into RNA. So there's a handful of like the, the second half of these questions is kind of a little bit all over the place. Double strand DNA, single strand DNA, translation into a phase and then RNA, right? But yeah, uh, ooh, ooh, ooh. Um, Masha, why are we getting rid of A and D off the bat? Go ahead and type that in the chat. That's, that's interesting. Um, so besides that, right? You kind of get to decide what half you want to start with in order to determine whether the answer choice is correct or not. And that's why I like these answer choices, these two parters, because it's kind of up to me. There's double the opportunity for me to go, uh, actually, no, that is incorrect for this reason. So something that, um, oh, I'm going to scroll up in the chat. Who was it? It was Anika. Something that Anika said right off the bat was that, hey, we know that reverse transcriptase is involved, right? So with that being said, there are, yeah, 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 Mash, I'm glad that you said B and D. I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was curious about the A. Um, so yeah, what, what is it about B and D? These just say they first transcribe, first transcribe. And like, that is my first opportunity to go, nope, that's incorrect. Cause I know that retroviruses reverse transcribe, right? Cause they've got this crazy thing called reverse transcriptase. So heck yes. So I'm gonna clear my drawings. I've got a lot of stuff going on. We've gotten rid of B and we've gotten rid of D because we don't like that they say first transcribes. So we're like halfway there, Adam, right? 50, 50, what's the next part of doing this? We know that should reverse transcribe. How would you? I mean, there's, there's literally only one half of one word different between the, those two choices. So uh, it's either single or double. Uh, and uh, I don't know about your genome, but my genome is double-stranded DNA. Uh, so I got a hunch we're talking about A. Yeah, 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 100%, right? So um, yeah, A is absolutely the correct answer. We got double-stranded DNA here. Heck yes. Um, that was a that's sick what biology burn, Adam. That was, ouch. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? I mean, no. was I, I was what was that? Was I implying Hunter as a fungus? Aren't there some sort of like? <laughs> I, I believe that you were. <laughs> yeah. Or, or or no no that that would be if I implied he was haploid. Dang it, dang it. Close, close. You know what? <clears throat> That's okay because I'm definitely a fun guy. Oh. oh. It was a collective groan. Actually, I think I felt the axis of the earth tilt a little bit with everyone's <laughs> eye roll. So that's okay. 
um, or anaerobic. Yeah, Christian, I don't know how to believe, uh, how to breathe. So heck yes, A. So this is a, a really good example of like one of the quote unquote strategies that we teach people, right? And I really, um, I don't know, personally, I dislike using the term strategy because it feels like it's like top 10 tips and tricks to pass the MCAT, like the AMC will hate you, et cetera, et cetera. And like, it's definitely not that, like they're skills. You have to train yourself to look at it in a certain way. And my most successful tutor, tutoring students and live online students essentially at the end of their prep, they're now like, quote unquote, seeing the matrix. Like they can read a question. They understand what the AMC, who, uh, like the author of the question, where they were trying to get them to go. And they can identify all these little pitfall traps that they like to throw in. So heck yes, we're going to cover a couple more in just a little bit, but we've got this incredible thing to look at first. Um, so enough of, enough of like content and stuff like that. Let's get back to cool art and drawings. Um, what am I staring at here? Uh, ben, I think you can help me out. Yeah, so, the, okay, this, maybe we're confessing a little bit that we cheated here and we thought about some of this in advance, but you guys are smart and you already figured that out. Um, the cooking I, show where it's like, and now my roast <laughs> is immediately done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. we, uh, uh, we wanted to talk a little bit about some of the symbols that we're not going to have time to, to vote on. Um, but before we even get into the specific symbols, I wanted to talk about a couple of sort of we call it environmental clues or sort of scene wide clues about what's going on here. So uh, one thing that you'll hopefully notice off the bat is that this scene is very, very orange. Uh, and at Sketchy, uh, especially for the step folks in the chat, uh, you'll know that we use orange to symbolize RNA viruses. So anytime we're talking about an RNA virus, that scene, the whole scene is going to get kind of an orange cast to it. Um, and then you'll see there's that cool, like, spacey sun situation going on in the back with a cool solar flare that's making a plus shape. Uh, and so when we talk about positive sense RNA viruses, we, we set them in the daytime and we have that cool solar flare like J.J. Abrams style situation going on in the back there. If this were a negative sense uh, virus, we'd have a moon with a cool kind of minus looking cloud ominously floating in front of it. Um, but so we think these environmental clues are super helpful because kind of like the theme, right? You see this as a space scene, you know you're talking about cell bio. It's easy to remember that, okay, the scene was orange and it was sunny, it was daytime. Like already you know that this is a uh, positive sense RNA virus and that's often like half the battle, right? That would have gotten you a good chunk of that last question just by remembering vaguely what this sketch looks like. And then, yeah, if, uh, I'm just kind of like glancing around here too. Like there's, I mean, we see this little, Reverse trans replicator. I love yeah. that. That's awesome. Yeah, actually, if you if you skip ahead to the next slide, Ricky can <laughs> talk a little bit more about that very symbol. Yeah, absolutely. The very one. Oh, yeah, with color. That's not just orange. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Ben went over some recurring symbols, which is so useful to bring back in. But of course, a lot of the symbols are going to be very specific and not used previously. So for this one, we have a reverse trans replicator that's got some like TSA vibes going on. And you can see there's some orange aliens going through the trans replicator and they have single heads to show that this is single stranded RNA. And of course, once they go through, you see this blue double headed alien come out and like with RNA, we use orange. Anytime we talk about DNA, we're, it's like always blue. So that's another hint that we're talking DNA versus RNA. Um, so we can see this whole process, right? It, it, exactly what reverse transcriptase does. And then if you go down below, you can see this is like kind of the transcription and translation part of it, right? So now this alien is being printed by some printers that were clearly in the space station to show that we're making messenger RNA out of you know using the host cell rib ribosome. So um, that guy's getting printed and then his neighbor uh, he's another RN alien. He's holding this like chain of space grenades to show that like we've made a, a polypeptide chain, right? We kind of wanted to show this like polymer made up of, of little monomers. So it's like kind of the idea that, that this is functional when you rip one off and throw it at your enemy, it doesn't explode until you actually do that. And, and that's exactly how these proteins work. It, they don't do anything or they're not functional unless they're in their like protein subunit. So you got to rip those apart to do anything. Ricky, like the amount of um, not just detail that you y'all put in here, but like the amount of, I guess, interconnectivity with all of it is is really impressive to me, right? Because like I don't know if anyone in the chat remembers 
it was probably like 20 minutes ago when we first saw the very first like space uh, illustration or symbol that y'all were putting together. Um, and one of you mentioned, oh yeah, the space station represents like the body, like that is us and there's aliens coming in and they're foreign invaders. And then just like the little thing here that's saying like, hey, look, these, these printers are part of the body. So like this RNA is now hijacked the machinery and it's replicate. Like, I think all of that is like, it's so, it's so, it's so nuanced and so impressive. So I guess there's no question here. I'm just showering praise to all of y'all. Um, do you go through like and sit for you know a, a good an entire minds melt and go like how can we connect everything or does this all just kind of you know stream of consciousness and things just fit together? Yeah, fortunately it happens pretty naturally and and uh, I would love to get all the credit that we are super clever in that but sometimes we just like get luck into things like um, you know and and there has been times when like the the person who ends up writing the narrative script will. Uh, like write something in it that wasn't even intended, right? Like even, I don't even think we like necessarily said, oh, these printers are like part of the the space station. Like we just kind of put them in there and then you can like kind of infuse that story from the art. So sometimes it's not even necessarily intended. And after the fact, you can go back and like, you know, kind of make the story and make the science make sense in that way. What, oh, yeah, yeah. To, what Ricky's trying to say is that we're all super geniuses and everything is very intentional. I'm sorry, I, was, I pronounced that super weird. Yeah, that was exactly what I was trying to say. I was literally <laughs> sitting here going like, oh, okay, Ricky. So y'all are just accidentally brilliant. That's wonderful. Super cool. Love it. <laughs> it's, um, it's like 50-50 again, you know? <laughs> um, hey, so we actually had a really good, we had a really good question in the chat um, that I think is a, a good one for us to actually take a second for. So Chris, who's best suited to benefit from sketchy? Can a non-trad with zero science background benefit from these lessons or would someone who has taken a, the, more, the traditional courses benefit more? Um, so I guess the question behind the question is how deep do these go? Does this cover everything that someone with zero background would need? It, maybe I can at least partially answer this question by saying that uh, I was a non-trad history major post back. Uh, so I think sketchy can work for pretty much anyone. That's awesome. What a mic drop. Um, yeah. 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 It's a, it's a plus one. What Ben said, heck yes. The only thing that these videos are just missing, um, is just, it's just someone like me, like someone to help you out live. If you have questions, but, um, yeah, these are fantastic. Let me tell you what, um, again, another resource that I wish I had when I was prepping for all of this. Um, so with all that being said, um, I think we have, yeah, we've got one more symbol that we need to vote on, right? So can anyone give me the, the, the gist, the detail? What's the context behind this scene? Yeah, so this is going to, it, all three of these uh, depict integrase, uh, which if you don't know, that is an enzyme that retroviruses use to take the double-stranded DNA that reverse transcriptase just synthesized and put that into the host cell genome where it lives forever and ever and ever until the cell dies, of course, but unfortunately it's passed down to all of their children. So uh, we've got our, our three choices here. I'm not going to I'm not going to say that one of these is the bad choice this time. I love these all. Um, <laughs> so we'll start with the kind of on the nose version. We have our double-headed DNA aliens uh, putting a computer virus into the space station uh, system, um, kind of integrating it in that way. Uh, in choice two, we've got those, the DNA alien uh, splicing in some sort of wiring or electrical uh, nefariousness into the uh, human space station. And then in choice three, we've kind of gone a little overboard with it maybe, but the DNA aliens are themselves the stowaways hiding out in the space station. Maybe there's a little bit of a love story going on here. Who's to say kind of like, you know, Nick Cage and his car, Eleanor in the famous film, Dawn in 60 Seconds. Uh, I don't know. Now Could, I'm just you know, impressed, man. Make your choice. <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah, now I'm just, now I'm just impressed. Um, so yeah, right. I'm in. Uh, two heads, you know, the, the cliche is, um, and I'm going to launch the poll really fast so that we can all, uh, <laughs> so that we all no, Joshua, don't do that. Ben's going to be sad. Um, so we can all start voting. So yep, poll is open. Go ahead and vote for whichever one you think is the most appropriate or whichever one you like. Um, but yeah, yeah, I'm just impressed. I'm just impressed with all of this stuff. Um, another, another gone in 60 seconds reference, or excuse me, Nick Cage reference. Well, what, yeah, um, what, 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 what was it? What Ricky didn't put in Ben's bio earlier is that it's not really Nick Cage. It's specifically only that movie. Every movie. Oh, oh, that's even more impressive, actually. A Nick Cage reference is a Nick Cage reference. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Awesome. Let's see. Um, ba, 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 ba. We've got a couple of good questions in here. Um, I'm gonna leave the the poll open for another 30 seconds or so. We're at, we're we're gonna keep it open for a minute. Um, so hey, Carly, after two threes, sketchy uh, sketchy in med school. Heck yes. Me amazing. Any point in your learning? Yeah, yeah. I totally agree. Um, so long story short, like if y'all, well, full transparency here. This is a safe space. Feel free. Throw it in the throw it in the chat. Give me a six for a thumbs up. If y'all have ever just like been prepping, you've gotten a question and like, holy cow, I have no idea what the answer to this is. And you hit YouTube or Yahoo answers or any of those other like real terrible resources in order to kind of like try to try to learn a, a topic really quickly. Hey, what up, Joshua? I see you. Me too. I did that all the time way back in the day when I was prepping for mine. Um, so yeah, sketchy is basically if, and especially like the sketchy in the blueprint bundle, right? Um, I'm not going to like speak on behalf of like what sketchy is for y'all because like I'm the blueprint guy, but that bundle together, I think is awesome because you've got your four full length exams, which are, I mean, super representative. It looks exactly like the MCAT, yada, yada, yada. Like the blueprint next up once they're there, everyone knows about. Um, but then when you're going through those exams and when you're trying to like review them and you're looking at the questions, if there's a part where it's like, I don't get this, like, what the heck am I supposed to do here? It doesn't make sense. I'm reading the explanation. I still can't get it. That's where the sketchy stuff comes in. Cause you've now got what you say, Ben, thousands of videos that are topic specific and can help you out whenever you have to, whenever you do have to like teach yourself that. So it's, 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 you, you don't have to resort to Yahoo answers. There is a much, much better, much better way that we are demonstrating right here. Yeah. We pride ourselves on being at least a half step above Yahoo answers. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Three quarters. Three quarters. No, I'm just kidding. Um, okay. So I'm about to close it down. Does anybody else want to cast a vote? It's real close. Five, four, three, two, one. All right. Uh, and the votes are in. Oh boy. It's number two. Oh, oh, number two. One vote. Yes. By what a single the... vote. Oh, Didn't yes. see that coming. I did not see that coming. <laughs> yeah. Single vote. Oh, um, Nick, Nick Hadrick. Sleeper. Pull it for number three. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Two's a good mix between one and three. I like it. I like it. Um, out of curiosity, which one did y'all have like odds on being the winner here well, number three for sure i thought it was gonna be number. yeah we, we actually we actually talked about this very thing we we're like i think like this is really gonna be number three isn't it they look happiest in number three it looks sort of like appealing but it looks cozy in there right i gotta right. say I, yeah. I i gotta say i really like about number two how the broken wire that that they're connecting has both ends like it's very clear there's a new wire that they're splicing in so the action is actually there as well um and i, I that well, i would theorize that was a lot of the appeal yeah i mean literally like every, every every detail i can go on and on they're basically i spies which if that was my prep experience i would have paid so much more attention instead of like you know doing the the head bob at my textbook and stuff so i yeah yeah you guys are awesome um so hey we're doing number two heck yes the people have spoken um uh -huh. Real quick, we've got a few minutes here. Um, let's just kind of burn through these. So this is another one of our like biochem questions. So once you've watched the videos, you know the content, you've got all the stuff, what's the next step? Practice, practice and application. Like you can, you can watch all the videos and read all the articles and all the instructions on how to be a great guitar player, but until you pick one up, it's gonna be rough. So practice, practice, practice. Let's dive into this one. We've got this Routy Gravier, and here's a free Hunter's, Hunt, Hunter's Helpful Hint, one of my H3s. Um, if you see words that you can't pronounce, just skip them and like make up another word. So ravioli is an antiretroviral drug that functions by inhibiting the enzyme integrase. How would integrase inhibition impede the life cycle of a retrovirus? So really quickly, there's a handful of things from the question stem, right? We uh, really don't care about this too much, right? Because what is the question really asking us? Well, how does integrase inhibition impede the cycle? So it doesn't really matter what the drug was. Okay, cool. I'm glad ravioli's out of the picture. That being said, now we need to know what integrase does. And I mean, eh, to a certain extent, like, you know, inhibition, what is this? Um, so there's two ways you can answer this. Um, the first one is just pure content. I have this memorized. I know exactly what integrase does and I know exactly what inhibiting it will do in the life cycle of a retrovirus. There's also a more fun way to do it. That's kind of along the lines of like using the MCAT and recognizing that, yeah, the AMC kind of has their hand side behind their back. It's a standardized test. They have to do like standardized questions and standardized answers and we can take advantage of patterns. Um, so Adam, like 
what the heck am I talking about? <laughs> I think I know what you're talking about, Hunter, but I got to be honest. When I read this, I just remember, you know, um, our little symbol hot wire in that car, like Nick Cage in the movie Gone in 60 Seconds. Like literally, um, <laughs> what are you talking about? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? <laughs> so, you know, uh, uh, I can't, I, I can't help myself, but remember that if we mess up integrates, then we're going to prevent, you know, integrating something into the, uh, into the host, into the host cell. And, and, and so for, for me, I, I think this is a, you know, this is a like very sort of strike zone, realistic type question of something you'll see attached to a, you know, a discrete question or, you know, something attached to a passage that maybe calls out a few enzymes. Um, and so like, uh, uh, it, it, I, I will actually answer <laughs> what you asked me, but, but, but this whole thing I think we're getting at is that there are a lot of ways to get to a right answer. You get it right. That's all that really matters. And so if you're using, um, tools like sketchy to lock in instant content recollection and you've got it, then you've got it. Wonderful. Um, if you don't, you're not like helpless we're not going to pretend like you know you can you can never possibly be successful in life unless you use sketchy maybe you'll be less cool i don't know but like you know <laughs> it's, it's, it's not you know it's, it's not like you're you're totally uh helpless but yeah um i'm thinking that like even if i've never heard of integrates before at all if i'm taking this as like an eighth grader or something um probably there's an integration going on because that's probably why they named the enzyme that <laughs> I love it. Yeah. And like, I, I really want to stress to everyone here until a lot of my students, like th there's so much that you can accomplish just with critical thinking on the test. Like literally critical thinking can carry you pretty far, not all the way. You need some content. I'm not going to try to brush that under the rug, but like critical thinking is the name of the game. So yeah, even if you had no idea what's going on here, ACE, oh, okay, cool. This is an enzyme. Luckily they told us right there that it's an enzyme, but integrase. All right. So it's going to be incorporating something or integrating something. Um, somebody actually in the chat, Brenda, uh, said uh, a kind of interesting, one good answer, one believable distractor, and two bad answers. You will be shocked how often that is the, the pattern of answer choice you see here. Um, so if we're looking at this one, right, the only two that are talking about integrating or incorporating or anything like that is just going to be A and C, right? So we can get rid of B, we can get rid of D. And I'm just going off because, hey, it's injecting genetic material or it's incorporating newly synthesized. Now, between the two, <laughs> with these enzymes, these retroviruses, so on and so forth, yeah, they got to get into the cell eventually. But with this one, between the two, injecting its genetic material into the host cell or incorporating newly synthesized DNA into the genome, I'm leaning towards C here, right? And if you had 50-50 and you didn't know what the answer was, that's fine. Half and half is better than and one, one out of four, right? So C is the correct answer here. Um, that's what we're dealing with. And we have, I'm actually going to burn real quickly because we got one more question that I'm just going to like go really quickly through um, before we start to do our Q&A and our giveaways. Um, so, hey, C was the right one on this one. Roman numeral strategy. Uh, I really want to give this to everyone because it's super important. Um, and who knows? It'll help y'all. I'll y'all out, right? So which of the following is true of this thing, right? It's just, hey, what do you know about reverse transcript days? You've got one, two, three, and four. My favorite Roman numeral strategy. Find the Roman numeral in your answer choices that occurs exactly twice, right? So it looks like one is exactly twice and two is three times, four is exactly twice and three is exactly twice. So one, three, or four, which one do y'all want to start with? Throw it in the chat. I'm going to do the first one. One, love it. So let's look at number one. Which of the following is true about the reverse transcript days? Enzyme, it's only found in RNA viruses. So unfortunately that isn't true. It's found in RNA viruses, DNA viruses. It's also just been found in like living things, right? So one out of here. And this is why we pick the one that occurs exactly twice. I'm now immediately down to 50-50. I am down to either B or either C because one Roman numeral is incorrect. And now if you look at the two, I don't have to look at one of my answer or one of my Roman numerals four because it's in both of the answers. So I'm not even gonna care what that says. Who, which one y'all wanna look at, one, two or three? Two, let's do it. I see, I see some twos, I see more twos. So number two, it can function as either in either cytoplasm or in the nucleus. That's 100% correct. That is absolutely true for reverse transcriptase. It just de depends on where it is and uh, excuse me, not where it is. Um, whether or not it's a DNA or it's an RNA virus, right? So heck yes. And with that, we immediately know that B is the correct answer. I did not look at four. I did not look at three. I only evaluated half of our potential Roman numerals and we're there. So that's kind of the name of the game with a lot of this stuff is, oops, not B, not C, excuse me. 
B, um, is kind of finding out ways that you can essentially use like that, that really awesome brain of yours in like more ways than just straight regurgitation of information. Um, so heck yes, that's some of the things that like, you know, hopefully <laughs> I forgot this was here. Um, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to break just now. Um, uh, hopefully the, those strategies can help y'all out. So, hey, we're super excited. Um, we're, it's giveaway time. This is a fun, fun, fun time. Uh, so number one, uh, in your Zoom options or in your Zoom like controls, you'll see like mute, so on and so forth. And you should see a thing that says Q&A. Click that Q&A and submit a question that has your first name and your last name and essentially like the, your goal score at the very end of it, right? So for instance, um, I would submit like Hunter Enright, 531. Um, <laughs> just kidding. Uh, and throw that into the open or into the Q and A uh, little slot there. It's, it, it keeps track of it and that's why it's important for us. We're going to take down everyone's name and randomly select someone. Um, and actually y'all keep me honest here. Are we announcing it here at the very end? Yeah. Heck yeah. yes, we are. While yeah. while while we roll the tumbler yeah, while of balls, while, we're while we roll the tumbler of balls to you know pick out the one that has like the right name in it, I do think we get to simulate the coolest part of the mind smell, which is the reveal, right, Ben? Yeah. Can we can we uh, hop back to Corey for a second, see where we're at? Oh yeah, Corey. For oh my game. goodness, I am so sorry, my friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do this. That's why I made this a corgi, by the way, because of Corey. I yes. Should. Whoa. Oh, okay. You've done some stuff. <laughs> so we started with, uh, you know, uh, everybody chose our helper bot or Helpertron 4000. Stuck her in there. She's forcing those bay doors open. And then uh, also worked in our other lovely option of uh, these aliens. Or I guess that's a alien, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's just one. <laughs> oh, sorry. And uh, yeah, and uh, through our little uh, star in there as well, you know. This is probably a little bit more colorful than uh, some pre-sketches, but uh, since it's a, it's a space one, you know, and you guys are special. This is, I'm, I'm blown away. There's a lot of people in chat that are saying like dang and wow and stuff like that. And yeah, I, um, I, I don't know. I constantly underestimate how quickly you can do these, Corey. Like I'm absolutely blown away. Thanks, man. Um, so there's a lot of people in chat. Let me tell you what. Um, so I'm very much looking forward to it. And like, again, for everyone in chat, just so they are 100% uh, aware, this is actually going to show up in, I'm not going to give a deadline, right? But in the near future, this is going to show up in an actual video of your guys' right? Yeah. So from here, you know, this will get uh, a coat of polish put on it, even beyond what Corey's already done. Oh, oh yeah. And, uh, and then we'll, we'll run it through our magical production machine and uh, write some jokes and turn it into a lesson. That's awesome. Um, Corey, I love it. It's like, oh yeah, no, no, no. If you think this, I'm done here. No, 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 no. How dare you? First of all. <laughs> you will, you will, you, you will need to subscribe to Sketchy Medical when this is released sometime over the next, you know, uh, two or three months to see if we put all the Nick Cage references in the script. <laughs> um, yeah, hundred percent. And for anybody that's testing in March or even April, right? Like I recommend to all my students when that last month of prep, you do a full length every single week leading up to it. Um, and Hey, those four full length exams from Blueprint plus this sketchy thing is super great for that. So, whoa, it's like there's a purpose for all this. Um, I do love one thing. Uh, Masha in the chat said, hey, we need to do more of these sessions. And I wouldn't be opposed to it. I had a good time. Y'all are awesome. It's great hanging out with you. Um, so I'm actually going to do one thing. Um, Corey, you're amazing. I'm stealing the screen. You are. Get out of here with that because we need the Corgi again. Um, so... Uh. We have got um, tons of uh, entries into our Q&A, which is perfect. We've got like two minutes left. Um, let's go ahead and, uh, and get any last entries in there. Um, I'll let you know, like in 30 seconds, we're going to officially like close it. And then these are the names that we're going to randomly choose from. Um, so if you haven't put your first and last name in the Q&A, please. And in the meanwhile, um, does anybody have any generalized questions for myself, for Sketchy, for any of the individuals that are here? Um, we're more than happy to answer some questions for like a couple minutes. It's just a bunch of like positivity. Y'all are amazing. John saying it was great to see behind the scenes. Tia, wonderful time with you. Thank you so much for joining us, Tia. Heck yes. Um, so without any further ado, I think we're about there. I think we've got all of our answers. Oh no, actually like a lot more just came in. Um, okay, cool. So we've got, a, we've got a question in here, but first let me ask all y'all, have we chosen a winner? 
Are my, I, I'll choose a winner the moment we officially say we're shut down. We're going to say, okay, are, it's going to be 10 seconds. We are officially shutting down in 10, 9, 8, <clears throat> 7, 6. Thank you for showing up, Zell. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Officially done. All right. Officially done. Uh, I need to, I need to hit the button. That's going to, that's going to, that's, that's going to give me a winner. Hold on. Who doesn't love random, like, I got them in. I got them in. I got them in. Okay. Uh, the lucky winner of, and I believe the exact, the exact prize is like on the, on, on the next slide of exactly what, what, what we're winning. Cause I don't remember exactly how many, get, how many tests are in the bundle, but four bundle or four the or lucky, four. lucky winner is Anna Everhart. <gasps> Anna Everhart. <laughs> who also yeah, shared awesome. her goal score, which is very high. And I hope you are able to achieve that. I hope everyone is able to achieve those goal scores. Love seeing those, um, in all of the yes. submissions. And yeah, Anna, as long as you were able to join this session, I think we've got your email address, so we can uh, we can we can handle a way to uh, to hook you up with that. Um, and yeah, so thanks everyone for. I mean, like really, like we had a good time here. Glad you know all you're saying. Like this was really cool to check out. Um, honestly. Uh, this is the kind of thing we've been wanting to do for a really long time. Uh, just like, you know, hang out with a bunch of people who want to see us happens and, and, and actually like get this from you. Like, I'm so excited that, that we're like, think of it this way. If you voted for number two, you know, on that, uh, on the, on that, on that integrase, it is up to, it is because of you that that is going to be the real symbol and the real sketch, because that was only by one vote. This one real vote, impact. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are, yeah, I mean, you guys are awesome. Um, Anna, congratulations again. And yeah, like this was super cool. I had a blast. Um, hopefully all of you did as well. Um, hopefully we get to do more of these soon, right? Like people like it. I had a good time. Um, thank you guys, all of you so much for joining us. Um, the four of you, Corey, you're amazing. Ben, you rock. Ricky, heck yes. Adam, you're the best. And then even our unsung hero, uh, Jess, who's in the chat. Yay. You are incredible. Thank you so much. Everyone Sounds like you just it. sung her. I'm just saying, I don't know if she's unsung <laughs> anymore. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, so, Hey, y'all are awesome. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, and yeah, have a good evening y'all. Um, take care. Woo. And goodbye.